So we're going to get straight into our first company. It's uh, Elemental Path. Yeah? Okay. Uh, six minutes, so go ahead and take it away. This is actually my seat, if that's cool with you. Could I sit with you? Sure. Yeah, okay. Go ahead. Hello, everyone. I'm Don Coolidge. This is JP Benini. And we are the uh, creators of Cognitoys. They're internet-connected smart toys that learn and grow with a child. We always joke that IoT means Internet of Toys. Uh, we took a very different approach to creating a toy, really putting the technology right inside of it uh, and allowing it to grow with a kid uh, as they uh, get smarter than they develop. Go ahead. We looked at toys where they were a decade ago uh, up to where they are now, and there hasn't really been a lot of innovation in the toy industry. Uh, you're starting to see some of that, but there was never really the approach that we uh, liked or we, wanted, we really wanted to see in toys. Uh, we took an approach of where would we like to see toys in a decade, and that's what we're creating. And I'll give you a little demo of Cognitoys. What's your name? I am Stumpy. Stumpy the Dino. What are you? I am a Cognitoy Dino named Stumpy. I know lots of stuff and like to play games. How old are you? 65 million and six. Tell me a joke. Ready? Where do you learn to make ice cream? I don't know. Sunday school. Want to hear another? No. Okay, then. That was fun, though. What so, would you like to do now? Keep in mind these are built for five to nine year olds, so part of it is creating that sassiness, that, that wittiness, uh, but also being educational. So we always drive the conversation back to something with an educational benefit. Uh, we answer all those uh, questions that kids are asking hundreds of them a day. What is the world's tallest building? Burj Khalifa at 2,722 feet. How far away is the moon? The moon is 238,900 miles, and it moves farther away each year. Say thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody. So that's a Cognitoy. Uh, they're dinosaurs. They come in three different colors. Uh, pink, blue, and green. Uh, they come packed with a bunch of educational content. They have jokes. Uh, they tell stories. They go on scavenger hunts. We're really taking the interactive educational approach, uh, making it en engaging over uh, the course of weeks and hopefully years, and not just one-off uh, question-answer uh, type engagements. In addition to the child toy engagement, that's supposed to be fun, uh, witty, and educational. We give parents access to uh, what we're calling the parent panel dashboard. Uh, that's a way for them to, to view some engagement metrics, uh, analysis on how a child is actually engaging with the toy. Uh, we also give them some sort of control, uh, such as being able to set a bedtime. In the future, we'll allow parents to send custom messages to the toy as well, such as, uh, I love you, have a good day at school today. Uh, it also, from a business perspective, allows us to get away from the cyclical uh, nature of the toy business. Uh, we can move into a subscription type model, sell additional content, or also sell additional features in the future. So uh, we really think it's uh, a way for us to build a platform around the dyno, sort of what Amazon Echo does in the kitchen, but this for a child. Um, allowing kids to use the dyno to talk to, engage with, but also pair it with an app and give parents some control via the parent panel uh, and allow some sort of ongoing subscription revenue for the company. This all started about a year and a half ago. We entered the IBM Watson Mobile Developer Challenge. It was a global uh, development competition where IBM invited teams to pitch. If you had access to Watson, what would you build? Uh, we pitched the idea of a toy that could learn and grow with a child. Ultimately, we were grand prize winners. Uh, we then moved on to a Kickstarter campaign with an initial goal of $50,000 over the 30-day campaign. Uh, we really blew it away. We raised uh, the $50,000 in just 18 hours. Uh, just about a month ago, we were honored by Time Magazine as an invention, a top invention of the year. Uh, on the online version, it was really interesting because we were right next to Tesla. Um, so we're a year-old company uh, bootstrapping it, and you have Tesla that has you know, a 25, 30 billion market cap. 
Uh, our first uh, large beta test starts in about 60 days from now. That's 5,000 units of Cognitoids that are going out to our Kickstarter supporters. Uh, we'll take that and we'll move into a full launch this holiday season. We're talking to many of the large retailers, smaller retailers, uh, both international and domestic. Uh, to hit on our business model once again, uh, the, the dinos will retail for $99.99. At small units, it costs us around $25 to build a dyno, uh, so we have great margins. At that scale, uh, our margins will get much better. On our roadmap, uh, we can get our cost of goods around uh, $15. And uh, at the end of the day, we're a toy. Uh, we're built for kids. We're supposed to be fun and educational. Uh, and we want to build more experiences like you see here. Uh, get kids laughing, uh, keep them asking questions, uh, and having fun at the same time. Thank you. All right, Elemental Path. <laughs> Judges, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, throw to you. You have mics scattered about you. So, I mean, at 100 bucks, seems like, I mean, I want to buy one of these to play with, frankly. What happens on the cost for you after sale? And you mentioned you can explore a subscription model. Have you done any of that? Do you have any data that people will pay a... $100 once is a lot different than $10 a month. Uh, correct. Uh, when we move into a subscription model, we'll actually bring the price point at retail down uh, based on how many uh, subscriptions we can sell or uh, what, what content we can sell. There are toys out there that do one thing at a time that are retailing at $60 or $70, such as being able to send a message from a parent to a child. Uh, that plumbing and piping is already there via the dinosaur, and with a few line of codes, we can sell that feature for, say, $2.99 a month. And that's something that almost every parent asks us for. Um, and then other features such as being able to uh, choose different voices. Uh, that's a, a feature that we believe we can sell also. And that's uh, also pretty easy for us to do. All right. Um, so I have two kids. And um, it's, it's actually very challenging for, uh, for us to buy toys because they keep on wanting more. Or you know, they just drop it very quickly. Um, so your, your target, you said, is, is five to nine year old, and, and you, you, want, you want it to evolve with the kid. Can you explain a bit more about how you were going to do that and make sure that uh, they just don't throw it away after one week? Um, yeah. So in our initial test, we have kids that will just ask knock-knock jokes for about two or three hours. Uh, we all know that when kids like something, they tend to get rep uh, repetitive with it. Um, we have our base feature set that you know is, is our best guess at what kids like based on our research and our initial testing, and then uh, we get uh, to see what kids are engaging with more. So this 5,000 unit beta that we're running in March is really to prioritize our content creation. So when we can identify the, those gaps in knowledge, say, in space content, we'll have our content creators uh, focus on space content. Uh, and that's why we're going with the 5,000 beta in March and not just doing a full launch in the fall. So I have a similar question. I mean, these kinds of things, it, at first they seem really, you know, sort of exciting and interesting and they, they become a novelty and then then they fade into the gimmickry, and it gets put in, in the side, right? Sure. Whether it's a toy or even, even uh, other things that are similar to this. So what is going to make people or kids want to stick with this? I, I didn't hear anything that said, you know, why they're going to keep coming back. Yeah. So kids, uh, we don't tell every feature that's in the toy. We allow, for so, we allow for discovery within the toy. So when a kid finds out they can do echo mode, they tend to stick with echo mode or ask questions, like uh, even math questions, when they know they can ask what 5 plus 5 is, they tend to then move on to 10 plus 10, 15 pl plus 15, and more. So they can uh, do their homework for them. Uh, it'll help with the homework. That might, that might be good to stick. Yeah, so in, uh, in the math, in the math uh, modules for us, if you ask what 5 plus 5 is, it'll give you the answer. And then it'll say, do you know what 5 plus 13 is? And it'll see how high a kid can go. And that's how we kind of try to help uh, teach a little bit of math as well. Can you explain a bit more about the technology that is uh, behind and uh, what is the out-of-the-box experience? So I get it, I need to connect it to Wi-Fi, then does the, 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 the voice recognition is made through Wi-Fi, through Google, and, and then uh, uh, you are still using Watson, or what, what's going on? You want to hit on that? Okay. Um, yeah, so you take it out of the box, and the first thing that you do as a parent is you download an app, and you connect it to Wi-Fi. Uh, once it's connected to Wi-Fi, you no longer need the smart toy or the, the smart the app, the smartphone. Uh, the toy is connected to Wi-Fi. You would take the app out again if you want to go to Grandma's house and connect to her Wi-Fi. But then the toy is on Wi-Fi, and it's the for the child to continue to use. Um, every time the kid holds the belly and, and uh, talks, uh, it's listening, sends it to our cloud platform, and then we send back a, a pertinent uh, response 
in the back end. Uh, I'll let JP hit on that a little bit because he likes to geek out a little bit in these things. And uh, Wait, does it remember Wi-Fi networks? It does. does. It'll save up to three of them so that we can actually move around with it. Um, and as far as how the whole back end part of it works, our end users are children, so we anonymize a lot of it. We are using Watson, and we've filled the corpus with a whole bunch of child-friendly information like the fun facts and otherwise. We can keep uh, adding to that, changing that over time. Uh, but once it's actually connected, like I said, the app is out of the way, everything's encrypted from Dino to our platform, and then our platform anonymizes any of that interaction, so we're not even storing the particular child information. We're storing preferences and things like that so we can fill in stories and games and activities. Uh, but it's all kind of locked down, so that way, you know, even one Dino can't see another Dino's data, stuff like that. What's the age range that you see kids using? Uh, five and up, and that's more of a technical consideration, considering that speech recognition really starts to work at about five. Anything less than then it's more or less grunt recognition and uh, it doesn't so really how, work. How old do you think boys will want to use those things right there, the way it's currently? Uh, the way that the personality can change over time, the way that content is unlocked, uh, nine is more of what we've built out to, but not necessarily the maximum. If anything, we have, like you said, you, you want a dinosaur to play with. The shape doesn't really matter. We can go into another form factor or even another type of toy completely, and technology will kind of keep lock pace. I mean, that was one of my questions, actually. There is a very famous dinosaur uh, called Pleo, and uh, so, so why, why did you choose dinosaur first? Pleo is no, no longer existing, but... Well, there's also Barney. I don't. I was expecting you to say Barney. Who is what you just said? Uh, Ple Pleo is a is a little toy uh, that, that 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 you know was was similar, but like ten years ago. Yeah. Well, we did the whole walk through the store, see what's on shelves, look at copyrights and what brands already built out there. And we kind of came to dinosaurs because they're awesome. We all like dinosaurs, and kids naturally gravitate towards dinosaurs. Uh, and it helps create that like. Uh, air of curiosity where the dinosaur can maybe mess up, uh, have a mistake uh, on speech recognition and come back with a, maybe a wrong answer, and it's still funny and playful. Uh, it's not like a really serious character. I would, I would just, say, if I could, one quick thing. I, I have four boys. They, they hate Bar I like Barney. I mean, you do not want, for boys, Barney is like, I, I think girls maybe, but boys, man, they just may want to design a little bit. That's my, that's my view. Okay. Um, give it up for Elemental Path. That's Thank it you. for our first company.